Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Last week, we heard Simon Peter ask the Lord Jesus that question about the extent of mercy required of us by the gospel. And the Savior insisted that our forgiveness of others must be without limit, because God's mercy to us, like his glory, is unbounded. And in the gospel today, taken from chapter 20 of St. Matthew, the Lord Jesus doubles down on this saving truth by revealing that in the kingdom of God there is no distance between justice and mercy. The parable of the laborers in the vineyard is deliberately provocative and stands on its head our normal expectation of what constitutes justice. A group of men work from sunup to sundown. Some work three hours less than the first, others six hours less, still others nine hours less, and then finally come the men who work only one hour. And yet at the end of the day, all of the laborers receive the same wage, provoking jealousy in those who worked longest and bore the heat of the day, but without gaining any advantage over the last to be hired. Now remember, the point of this parable is not to show us how to run a business, but to teach us how we come to the kingdom of heaven. And each of us comes to the kingdom, if we come at all, only by God's gracious invitation and our acceptance of that call. Some answer the call early in life, while others respond in the midst of their life, and others answer only at the eleventh hour. But because the Lord of mercies is infinitely gracious and generous in forgiving, all who accept his invitation are welcome to his kingdom with the same joy and the same unconditional love, no matter how long they may have resisted the grace of God. But here's the problem. Giving an equal welcome to the latecomers may be unwelcome news to those who, like the older brother of the prodigal son, attempt to live in keeping with the word of God all their lives. After all, why should the profligates receive the same blessing as the obedient? Isn't that simply a reward for bad behavior? Here's the answer to that paradox. The same grace given to the latecomer as to the lifelong disciple is not a reward for bad behavior, because being invited to God's kingdom is not a reward even for good behavior. Sharing the divine life of the Most Holy Trinity is not, in fact, a reward of any kind. It is rather the free and unmerited gift of God to his creatures, the gratuitous offer of eternal life and love given to those who have no claim on it in any way, from any title, or for any reason. The grace of salvation cannot be earned or purchased by any means. And the gifts of justification, sanctification, and glorification are offered to every human person without exception by the only one who is righteous and just, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by his atoning death on the cross redeemed us from the grave and by his glorious resurrection raises us to the life of the new creation when we accept that gift. In the kingdom of God, there is no distance between justice and mercy because they have been united and reconciled by Christ on the cross. And once we are a new creation in Christ, then God the Father sees and loves in us what he sees and loves in his Son. All that is asked of us is to choose whether or not to accept Christ's free offer of grace 
and then to live according to the choice we make by grace through faith in the Son of God. Of course, here the scoffer will reply, okay, so I'll give up my wayward ways just in time to sneak into the kingdom at the last minute. But for now, I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints. But friends, that is just another lie of our ancient enemy, the father of lies. Because in truth, sinners don't laugh. They only smirk. And the saints don't cry. They cry out, Hosanna, Alleluia, glory to God in the highest. Those who know the truth of the gospel are the very first to discover why they exist and how they should live to find true happiness and interior peace. While those who rage against the eternal word live in a constant state of confusion and adolescent tantrum, which leads only to sadness and emptiness and finally to despair. You can see this pattern reflected both in individual lives and in large groups of people who share the same approach of accepting or rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Consider, for example, the annual March for Life, which takes place in Washington each year on the January anniversary of Roe v. Wade. And contrast that event with the marches organized by any of the anarchist mobs now filling our streets. Both movements exist to protest profound injustices and affronts to human dignity. But the March for Life, despite the grim reason for its existence, 65 million dead, is filled with light and joy and beauty while the anarchist agitations spew darkness and hate and ugliness. One is peaceful, the others are violent. One respects its opponents and seeks to change them. The others despise their opponents and seek to destroy them. These profound differences are but a reflection of the different starting points of the two paths. And seeing this truth helps us answer the scoffer who wonders why he shouldn't wait until the 11th hour to accept God's grace instead of answering the call now and then bearing the heat of the day longer than he wants to. There is also another reason we should never wait to accept God's invitation to the kingdom, and it is this. We do not know when we will die. That is why the prophet Isaiah exhorts us Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. Friends, the truth of the word of God is the full truth of the human person. And yes, knowing that truth early in life brings obligations to those who follow the Lord, obligations which pagans claim not to have. But knowing the truth of the gospel also brings the light and life of the world into our lives now. And that in turn changes everything about us, including how we experience everything in our lives, the burdens no less than the blessings. Today the psalmist sings to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. We were created, and we exist, for the praise of God's glory. And when we know that truth and accept it with the obedience of faith, then we find the glorious freedom of the children of God and we can live in sweet liberty from our own disordered desires. And in that freedom from sin is the beginning of wisdom and the true flourishing of every human person. It turns out that working a full day in the Lord's vineyard, bearing the heat and the burdens of labor, is the very best way to lead a deep 
rich, full, authentic human life while waiting till the end of the day to begin the work is just a wasted life. As missionary disciples of the Lord Jesus, it is our duty and privilege to share that gospel with everyone. And yes, we know that some will receive the grace of the word with joy, while others will reject it and scoff at our supposed folly for working all day in the heat, when we could just cool our heels until the very last and then join the party. But to one and all, we must bear faithful witness by our words and our lives to the eternal and incarnate Word of God, the one who alone is the way, the truth, and the life, the Lord Jesus Christ.